Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Brayden, or in the healing community known as Be Good Builds, and today we're going to be making what you see in front of you. This is a LoRa controlled IO switch that can be used to remotely turn off any electronic device that you need um, turned off that you can't access manually. So. Uh, through this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can set up a Helium console account, add IoT devices to it, and integrate Datacake. Once we're done with that, we're going to be going over the wiring diagram. So I'll show you how you can set this up on your own. And after that, I will show you how to control the switch via the console and data cake integration. Um, once we're done with that, I'm finishing off this video, just showing you guys some of the other applications and possibilities with this device, since there's plenty that I, I plan on exploring in future videos. So with all that out of the way, let's get into the first step. Okay guys, so to get started with this, we're gonna need to make a Helium console account. So in order to do that, and I'll link it down below, all you'd have to do is go to console.helium.com. And from there, it's gonna ask probably for a password and email, and then a verification of your email address. Once you got that out of the way, you can now access your own console where you can add and register IoT sensors to the network. Um, this is also where you'll be able to control those IoT sensors. So once you've gotten that out of the way, under the devices tab, there's a add new device button. All you're gonna wanna do is click on that and you'll have these a couple of fields to fill in name. You can name it whatever you want. I just named mine IO switch. But next is the dev EUI, app EUI, EUI and app key. Uh, your device should come with all three of these, whether on a piece of paper or directly on the device. Um, so you can go ahead and input these uh, manually or if you can scan a QR code, that'd be even better. Um, but anyway, once you've inputted all those, you can go ahead and save device. So once that is out of the way, you can go back to devices and you should see your new device will show up here. Like I said, I named mine IO switch. I unfortunately can do that live for you guys. I had done it way before, um, but that's okay. So once you've got it registered, you should see uh, something like this, the over the air activation. Uh, essentially, that means that it should take around 20 or so minutes for the network to get in contact with your IoT device. Once that is done, or IoT sensor, once that is done, you should see some live data pop up in here. So that's cool. Um, now moving on to the next part of this, we need to integrate uh, Datacake. Datacake is this platform that makes it really easy um, and, what's the word here? For people that don't know how to code or read code, it makes it a lot easier to control your devices. So um, anyway, so to get this done, you go to your integrations tab in the in the console and you see it's just like the devices tab. You can add new integration. And from here, you're gonna wanna click on data cake and it's gonna ask you for a data cake token. So at this time, you're gonna wanna go over to data cake's website, which um, I will also link this below, but it's, I don't know the exact URL, URL but anyway, data cake. And from there, once you've made an account, you can click on your name up here and edit profile and if you click on API. You can see that your API token will be found right here. So you can go ahead and copy uh, that and paste it into this field. And once you've done that, the integration should be successful. And once that is done, you can go ahead and take your IO switch or excuse me, you can go to flows. And from here, you can do hit node, in device, drag out your IO switch, which I've already done it, unfortunately, so I can't exactly show you, but you would drag that there and then take data cake and drag it here too, and then connect the two. So pretty simple. This now allows data cake to um, integrate with our uh, console and directly uh, communicate with our IO switch. So when I go into data cake now, and I go to where am I? Oh, I'm already on it. Okay, so fleet, go to fleet, and then IO switch will be here. You can see it makes it really, really easy for me to snap on and off relay one, relay two, it's just a toggle button. And once I hit these buttons in here, it will go and talk to the IO switch. And eventually it will send a downlink. So that's, that's all for that. That is how you um, set up your IO controller. Uh, using data cake and now I think we can move on to the next part of the video Okay guys, so moving on to the next step uh, we can go ahead and Show you guys the wiring diagram after we've set up the helium console in the data cake uh, Integration 
and our IO controller within the Helium console. The next step is to move into actually building out um, our remote off-grid uh, miner uh, IO controller configuration. So uh, I'll publish this um, somewhere, uh, probably on my website, and I'll link it below so you guys can refer to it if, if need be. But uh, just to start off with naming off what we have here, we have a battery that's obviously gonna power the whole system. We have a charge controller, which we're mainly gonna be utilizing for its load terminal, which is um, how we can power everything else. Uh, and solar, I, I didn't end up lining that up with anything, but if you're using an off-grid rig, uh, you'll, you'll know what this is for. Um, but anyway, our charge controller and the buck boost converter. The buck boost converter allows, allows us to set whatever voltage we need to run in order to power the miner. So in this case, I'm using a sense cap, which I know runs on five volts, which means I can use this thing to set, it has a little dial on it, allows you to set it to five volts. If say I was using a 12 volt miner, I would adjust the dial to 12 volts. So pretty simple and straightforward there. Uh, next we have our, our IO controller. And uh, this is gonna allow us to turn on and off the relay, which I will get into pretty soon here. We're gonna have a USB-C pigtail, which I pulled up a picture of for you guys. This is essentially just a USB-C with the positive and negative wires exposed. So if you have an old USB-C charger lying around, you could really essentially, you could just cut that open if you really needed to. Um, I also have these linked um, on my Helium build guide video parts list because I do use these a lot. Um, so if you're looking for them there, you can find them there or you can see on eBay, they're literally $2 each. So it's not a bad deal at all. So going back to Illustrator, last thing we have is our Helium Miner, which is pretty straightforward. Um, you know, that's what this whole video is about. So uh, to start with the easy stuff, the wiring that is not hard to do, all you're gonna wanna do is take your battery, positive, and um, your negative and plug it into the charge controller. So you know, positive to positive, negative to negative, pretty straightforward. I use wire lugs on the battery and the exposed um, wires can go just straight into the uh, screw terminals on the charge controller. So once you've gotten that out of the way, now I think the easiest thing to power next is probably gonna be our buck boost converter. So once again, on the buck boost converter, you'll see there's a voltage in and there's a positive and negative. You're gonna simply take your load terminal on your charge controller, get some 22 gauge wire like I have here. Um, you could probably go bigger gauge if you wanted, but I just use 22 because it's a relatively low voltage system. Excuse me. And so you're gonna run a positive wire out of the positive load terminal on the charge controller into the positive voltage in terminal on the buck boost converter. They're both screw terminals, so you know you just put the wire in and you screw it shut. So to clamp it down. Uh, lastly, for that, obviously you're gonna to wanna to do the same thing with the negative wire off the load, it goes into the voltage in on the negative. So once you've done that, your buck boost converter should be turned on. You can go ahead and set the voltage to whatever you need it. Like I said, for this uh, example, we're using a sense cap, so it would be five volts. Whew, okay, so. Next, we should go ahead and power the IO controller. So same exact idea. All you're gonna do is run a, another 22 gauge wire out of the load terminal on the charge controller. And that's gonna go to the VN on the um, IO controller. And on that, there's actually just gonna be a, um, no positive or negative label. It's gonna be labeled VN and ground. So your voltage in is your positive and your ground is your negative. So again, once you have that out of the way, pretty simple, straightforward, right? Uh, well, this thing should be powered and now we can move on to actually setting up our relay between these one, two, three, four devices. So, um, bear with me. This is, this is a uh, very simple. Once you've gotten it down, just pay attention. So out of the bug boost converters, load terminal, positive terminal, we're, uh, excuse me, we are going to run a 22 gauge wire to relay one, uh, dash one. So that should be labeled on the bottom of your um, IO controller. So once you've done that, we are pretty much set to now only use the USB-C. You won't have to use any more of the 22 gauge wire. So the pigtail USB-C should come with um, a positive negative wire coming off of it. The negative wire is going to plug into the buck boost's negative terminal. And while the positive end of the USB-C pigtail 
is going to go into R012 on the IO controller. So once you've gotten out, that, uh, out of the way, uh, everything should be up and running and you can go ahead and plug in your USB-C to the sense gap. Um, make sure again, and I, I have to say this time and again, over and over again, make sure that the buck boost converter is set to five volts before you do this. Uh, if not, you will fry your miner and that is just $500 or so down the drain, which is never fun. So again, always, always make sure that you have the voltage set to the right um, setting before you go ahead and turn it on. Okay guys, so last but not least, I wanted to show you <clears throat> a real world application to use this. And so to do that, we're gonna go into Data Cake and under the downlinks tab, we are going to select switch on all relays and there's a send downlink button. So to do that, you would simply just click it. I'm not gonna do it yet because I wanted to explain a, a couple things. Um, so as you can see right here, the IO controller is turned on, but down here is R01. One and R012. Those are both not turned on due to the LED light not showing up. So you can see just to verify that uh, if it was on, the miner's blue light right here would be on, but it's not. So we're gonna go ahead and send this down link. And once you've done that, you can see in the Helium console here that downlink has been queued. And so now we just simply have to wait until. Uh, the message goes downstream and hits the LoRa controller and turns on the system. So we will wait for that to happen. Okay. Well, that took um, a lot longer than expected, but I guess it makes sense because I don't have the best coverage here. Um, but as you can see, the uplink finally did um, send, and or sorry, the downlink finally sent, and you can see that um, here. So there should be nothing left in the queue. Yeah, so the relay, as you can see, turned on. That was hopefully indicated. I hope you guys could have heard that pop that it made. It makes a little sound when it clicks on. But um, now, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, I can see, uh, you guys can't see it unfortunately, but there is lights on on the miner. And there we go, now it is turned on. So, perfect. Um, uh, that uh, I think that took about, let me see. 12 minutes for that message received, which is a long time. But again, I think it's I think it has to do with my coverage in my area being bad. Plus, I am indoors. Um, but that is an uh, just real world example of this device working. I'm gonna tilt this back up so I can talk to you guys. There we go, perfect. So hopefully, you guys um, enjoyed that little build guide. Um, I did want to talk about one last thing, and that is the uh, other things that you can do with this switch. So you could, in theory, if you wanted to, uh, and I was planning on making this a f out of a full video, but um, you could get a temperature um, sensor, like Dragino makes the LHT65, which is a simple temp sensor, and you could plug it in like I have here. I don't actually have one, but you could create a rule within um, data cake here where let's say you had instead of this thing plugged into the miner like it is you had the relay plugged into this fan and you wanted to make the fan turn on once uh, your room or whatever sort of area in my case it would be an off-grid enclosure reaches a certain temperature so I could go to um, if the temp sensor is oh, Sorry, if it is a temperature equal to, and this is in Celsius, and I don't really entirely know Celsius. I think, what is it, 40 degrees is hot, I think. Uh, then, then you could do then, and you could change this message to send a downlink to the IO switch to switch on all relays. And in that instance, uh, if this was plugged into the fan, then the fan would turn on once the, uh, temperature sensor was to report a 40 degrees Celsius or hotter so this is just one of these like simple things you know I could I could set this up as uh, turn on fans if 
too hot, you know, and then I can create that rule. And now if I was to have a temperature sensor, which I don't at this time, and I might just end up making a second part of this video where, or when I do have one, um, this would work as a great way to automate the process of turning on and off your fans uh, if necessary. So with all of that out of the way, I think that pretty much concludes this video. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, if you need any help or further assistance figuring this out, if you do try and take this on on your own, um, please feel free to reach out. I, uh, I'm going to make sure to link all of those extra resources that were um, talked about in this video down below. So be sure to refer to those if need be. Um, but that's it for me, guys. I hope you did enjoy and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.